When looking to build the best performing coil gun, there's quite a few questions I need to answer. This range from what gauge wire to wind the coils with, the starting distance of the centre of the projectile to the centre of the coil, size of the projectile, shape of the projectile, and finally, when does it make sense to go with multi-stage design over a large single coil? So this video will hopefully answer these questions through several experiments or leave me with more questions than I started with. First thing we need to think about is what variables we want to maximize or minimize to make the most powerful coil. The strength of a magnetic field in a coil is determined by the number of turns in a coil multiplied by the current, all divided by the length of the coil. So we want to aim for a design that allows for a high current and large number of turns while keeping the length of the coil to a minimum. The number of turns and length of the coil will be set by our design, but calculating the current passing through the coil is a little trickier. The current can be calculated with a differential equation that relates the rate of change of current through the coil to the resistance, inductance, capacitance, voltage, and time. But this led to my first issue, as the inductance of the coil changes depending on the position and size of projectile in the coil. While I'm using a fixed inductance for the calculation, so I'm not getting an accurate representation of the current curve. I'm yet to come across a way to calculate this accurately, but if anyone knows how to calculate it, let me know down below in the comments. It isn't going to be an issue with the tests we are performing now, but will be helpful in the future. We will be using 400 volts for all the tests, which will be generated by a boost converter. The boost converter achieves a high voltage by a current passing through an inductor so a magnetic field builds and then suddenly stopping the current flow which causes the magnetic field to collapse creating a voltage spike. The magnitude of this voltage is determined by the duty cycle at which the current is switched on and off through the inductor. This is done by configuring a triple five timer to switch a MOSFET on and off rapidly at the desired duty cycle. With the first test, we'll be testing the difference between coils wound with 0.63mm and 0.75mm diameter wires. To control as many variables as possible, we'll be using the same coil shape of 6 layers and 70 turns, and the same capacitance in the capacitor bank and voltage. Since the magnetic field strength is higher with more turns, more current and shorter coil length, we'll be gaining in field strength due to the shorter length of coil be offset by the increase of resistance reducing the current passing through the coil. The highest projectile speed achieved was from the 0.75 millimeter wire at 28 meters a second with the 15 millimeter long projectile followed by the 0.63 millimeter wire at 26 meters a second with the 15 millimeter long projectile. The highest kinetic energy was a tie between the coils each recording 1.5 joules using the 30 millimeter projectile with 82 joules of stored en energy in the capacitor bank. Where the 0.63 millimeter wire coil bested the 0.75 millimeter wire coil was in the efficiency where it achieved an efficiency of 2.12% with the 20 millimeter projectile and 41 joules of energy stored compared to the 0.75 millimeter wire of 1.83% with a 30 millimeter long projectile and 82 joules of stored energy. For these results, it looks as though the thicker wire has led to a minor performance increase when using the shorter length projectiles. But during the test, the 0.63 millimeter wire heated up to the point it couldn't be touched after several shots. So there is more energy being wasted to heat. The 0.75 millimeter wire coil could though be fired at a higher energy level when using 123 joules of stored energy where it achieved a kinetic energy of 2.07 joules with a 30 millimeter projectile but the 0.63 millimeter wire was more efficient when only 41 joules of energy was stored in the capacitor bank. They both had similar efficiency with 82 joules of energy stored. Now on to what is the best performing projectile diameter? I have a few ideas that seem to conflict with each other. On one hand, with the smaller diameter projectile, we have a tighter coil 
meaning less resistance for the same coil shape, so more current can flow through the coil, leading to a stronger magnetic field. But on the other hand, the large projectile, the more material the magnetic field can act upon, even if the strength of the field is smaller due to the higher resistance of the coil. So we'll be testing the difference between several projectile diameters, ranging from 6mm to 10mm, while keeping the same coil design of 6 layers by 70 turns. The highest speed was achieved with the 6mm projectile, which managed a top speed of 28 meters a second. This decreased with each size increase with the 8mm achieving 24 meters a second and the 10mm 23 meters a second. When it came to the highest kinetic energy and efficiency, the order was flipped with the 10mm projectile achieving 3.07 joules with the 30mm long projectile at 19 meters a second and 3.74% efficiency followed by the 8mm by 30mm long projectile at 2.3 joules at 20 meters a second and 2.81% efficiency. Then the 6mm by 30mm long projectile at 1.5 joules at 23 meters a second and 1.83% efficiency. From these results, we have found that the 6mm projectile managed to reach the highest speed, but had a lower kinetic energy and efficiency. Although the difference in speed wasn't that significant, it would mean that the large diameter projectiles would have a shorter range. This difference of range, if they were shot horizontally at a height of one meter above the ground, would be a 14% decrease for the eight millimeter and 18% decrease for the 10 millimeter. The larger projectiles do appear to be a better option with a far greater kinetic energy and efficiency. After seeing the results of the projectile diameter tests, it made me wonder how much of the material in the projectile is being acted upon by the magnetic field. Does the magnetic field penetrate all the way through the projectile or is the centre of the projectile just dead weight that needs to be accelerated? So to test this, I drilled some 2.5 and 5mm holes through the centre of the projectile and ran them through the same tests. The results revealed that when the centres were drilled out, the projectile still managed to achieve the same speeds, but due to the material being removed and therefore having a lower mass, they had a lower kinetic energy, so it does appear a solid projectile is ideal. The solid projectile performed the best by far in both the kinetic energy and efficiency. Now for the test that brought about this entire video. When does it make sense to go to a multi-stage design which is the better design when controlling for the number of turns in each coil? A coil that has the same number of layers but double the length, so going from 70 turns per layer to 140 turns. A coil with the same amount of turns but double the layers, so 12 layers by 70 turns. Or the two-stage design with two coils of six layers by 70 turns. My thinking is the longer coil, although the resistance is increased, and by having double the length, it could mean that the projectile is in the magnetic field for a longer period of time that could lead to a higher velocity. While with the coil with double the number of layers, the magnetic field, whilst also having a higher resistance, it could be condensed into a smaller area. To trigger the second stage at variable times, an IR gate will be used. While the beam is intact, the phototransistor will be receiving the infrared light from the IR LED and be conducting. Once the beam is broken by the projectile passing through it, it will stop conducting and the electricity will flow through the resistor in parallel with it. When this happens, the two resistors act as a voltage divider and the voltage can then be read by a microcontroller at the point between the two resistors. When the beam is intact, the phototransistor is conducting and is pulling the voltage divider to ground so the microcontroller is reading digital low or zero volts. But once the beam is broken and the phototransistor stops conducting, we get a five volt digital high signal from the voltage divider. To calculate the voltage between the resistors, the voltage divider calculation is used. Once the microcontroller receives this signal, it delays for a set time in microseconds to allow the projectile to reach the optimum point before switching the coil on. 
The coil is switched on by sending a signal from the microcontroller to the NPN transistor, which will pull the gate on the P-channel MOSFET low and will be conducting, and will switch the voltage signal to the SCR firing the coil. The MOSFET in its normal state will be tied high by a resistor across the source and gate and not be conducting. A top speed of 41 meters a second was achieved by the two stage design with 82 joules of energy stored in each capacitor bank using 15 millimeter long projectile. Followed by the 12 by 70 and 6 by 40 coils, each reaching 23 meters a second. But the 12 by 70 coil only required 82 joules of energy, while the 6 by 140 coil required 123. The highest kinetic energy of 3.89 joules was achieved with the two stage design. 82 joules of energy were stored in each capacitor bank and using the 30 mm long projectile. When using the 30 mm long projectile, the 12 by 70 coil achieved 1.37 joules with 82 joules of energy in the capacitor bank and the 6 by 140 coil only got 1.25 joules with 123 joules stored in the capacitors. Now for the efficiency. The two-stage design once again came out on top at 2.67% with 123 joules stored in the capacitor bank, 82 in the first, then an additional 41 in the second. What I found most surprising was that the single stage with the same coil could only achieve a peak efficiency of 1.83%, as my initial thinking was that the additional stages would become increasingly less efficient. The 12 by 70 coil came in a close second at 2.5% efficiency with 41 joules of stored energy. And then finally, the 6 by 140 coil only achieved 1.62% with 82 joules of stored energy. The takeaway from this experiment is that the two stage design was more efficient than just the single stage. I originally had the thought that each subsequent stage would have some loss of efficiency but was happily proved wrong. It also appears though, to get the most out of each stage, either the capacitance of each stage will need to decrease consecutively or the design of the coil will need to change. After going through all the results, the best setup moving forward would appear to be a multi-stage design with the solid 10 millimeter projectile. Some changes though that will be tested next time is to change from using SCRs to trigger the coils to something that can easily be switched on and off like a MOSFET so the power through the coil is only on for the optimum time from when the projectile enters the coil and then switched off when the centre of the projectile is at the centre of the coil. I'm thinking of doing this by experimenting with delays from when the IR gate beams are broken or by measuring the inductance of the coil. If you guys have any improvements to my design or any ideas I could test, comment them down below and I'll investigate them for the next video. The last part now is to see what damage the two designs with the highest kinetic energies can do.